In this video, we'll go over how to measure the current and estimate the power consumption for your iron 100 on the EVK, the evaluation kit. So let's get started. So before we get into actually measuring the current on the IN100 development board, let's go over some important background information on power consumption and current measurement. Most electronics consume a varying rate of power, unlike something like an analog clock, for example, where the power consumption is constant across time. Now for BLE devices, power consumption is heavily impacted by the amount of time that the Bluetooth radio is turned on. The more the device turns on the radio, the more power it consumes. And for Bluetooth-based beacons, such as the IN100, where all it does is send out advertising packets, the power consumption heavily depends on the frequency at which the device sends out these advertising packets. In other words, the advertising interval value. Now, current measurement is key to figuring out the power consumption of your device, and this is what we're focusing on in this video. As a general rule, in order to find out the battery life, we can use the following equation. The battery life in hours is equals to the battery capacity in milliamp hours divided by the average current in milliamps. This gives you the estimated battery life in hours, which can then be converted to weeks, months, or years. Now, some of the benefits of using the IN100 include a wide operating voltage range between 1.1 volts to 3.6 volts, which means that it can provide the user with flexibility in the battery choice for their specific application. Another benefit is the ultra low sleep currents, which is at 650 nanoamps, meaning it's very easy to achieve long battery life of up to 10 or even 15 years with just a tiny battery. We recommend the 1.5 volt batteries since they are recyclable and more environmentally friendly, which is ideal for disposable and recyclable applications. Here's a table showing what you can expect in terms of battery life based on the advertising interval and the battery capacity when using the IN100. The table here references a 1.5 volt battery with a max pulse discharge rate greater than 10 milliamps. The fields are color coded based on the battery life that can be achieved. As you can see, the blue area represents use cases where you can achieve 10 plus years of battery life. This can be using a battery with a capacity as low as 90 milliamp hour with an advertising interval of three minutes or greater. So if your application does not require a higher advertising interval than that, then you can achieve really long battery life with even a very small size battery. To get an accurate average current measurement, you will need to use a meter that can measure from 20 milliamps down to at least a couple hundred nanoamps. Now examples of tools that could be used for this purpose include an oscilloscope or a specialized development board or a digital multimeter. Now keep in mind that in all cases, in order to measure the current, you will have to place the measurement tool in line with the circuit. For the purposes of the exercise in this video, we'll be using one of the specialized dev boards that can also be used for measuring current shown here. This board is from Microchip or Atmel and it's called the SAML21 Explained Pro. The board allows us to do both, supply the IN100 dev board with power as well as measure the current and both done at the same time. The way it works is by connecting the dev board to the computer via USB cable and then running the Microchip or Atmel Studio app on the PC. With it, you can then analyze the instantaneous and average current values for the connected device under test, in our case, the IN100. Now there are two modes available, either having the board provide the device under test with the power needed or by utilizing an external power supply that is fed through the dev board. In this video, we'll be utilizing the power supply functionality that's provided by the dev board itself. Let's walk through the steps necessary for setting this up. So the first step is to remove the jumper J8 from the IN100 development board. After removing the J8, connect the measure pin on the Explained Pro board to pin one labeled VCC of J8 on the IN100 development kit. Now you'll have to change the locations of the jumper on the current measurement pins that are on the Explained Pro board, and that's not shown here. I'll show this in a little bit in live video. The next step is to connect the ground from the Atmel dev board, any of the ground pins, to one of the grounds on the IN100 development board, for example, pin six of J3 as shown here on the right side. Step number four is to connect the IN100 development kit to the programmer board and to the computer 
as explained in previous tutorial videos, and then running the NanoBeacon config tool, resetting the development board via the K1 button, and then configuring the application and running in RAM. Once you have that done, then you can head on to Atmel or Microchip Studio, make sure you have that installed, run the application, and then select the connected dev board from the devices list. We'll take a look at that here shortly. We have a, a feature called the auto detect protocols. We have to enable that. And then we make sure that we enable the power interface. So this is what it would look like when you launch Atmel Studio or Microchip Studio. And then once you connect to the board shown here, then you can make sure that auto detect protocols is set. It'll show up all these different interfaces and we're going to select power. And then this power analysis window will show up. The final step, step number six, is to remove the development kit from the programmer. And now we can adjust the supply voltage to whatever value we want. So in the case of the Atmel board, it does not support anything other than 3.3 volts. So we'll just stick with that. So now we'll go ahead and start measuring. The different test cases that I'm going through are going to be an advertising interval of one second, five seconds, 10 seconds. And for the custom data you see here in front of you, I've included quite a bunch of different data fields. This is to maximize the advertising data just to get an estimate based on the full advertising data of 31 bytes being occupied. Okay, so here, as you see in front of you, I have the IN100 development board connected to the programmer board and connected via the cable to my computer. I also have the Microchip Explain Pro board, and these are the pins that I'm connecting to it. So. First of all, we have we have to disconnect the jumper down here on the IN100 and connect the VCC line to one of the measurement probes on here. This is labeled current measurement. This you have to replace these jumpers and put them in this order to bypass and then you connect to the measure pin on the top here. Once you do that, then you have to connect, you have to find one of the ground pins on the Explain Pro board, and then connect it to one of the ground pins on the IN100 as well. Once you have that running, let's make sure that the application is actually running. This is Microchip or Atmel Studio. And as you can see here, I have a list of devices. Now, I only have one device, and this is this development board connected, so I'm going to go ahead and connect to it. We have the auto detect protocols enabled. It's going to search for protocols, and it's going to come up with the different interfaces. One of them is the power interface, and that's the one that we're using for this current measurement exercise. Once that populates, select power measurement, and then hit start. Okay, I have an application already running here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this, close it, reset the board so we don't have any current measurements and restart it again. Now let's go ahead and configure the board. So as I mentioned previously, I'm going to configure one advertising set with all of these different data fields in the advertising packet. I'm occupying all 31 bytes from 0 to 30. And then I'm going to show you just the advertising parameters. So this is where I'm going to set the value. So let's start with one second. That's the first use case that we're trying. Hit OK. Make sure I'm connected again. And then I'm going to run in RAM. Once that's done, we can go back to Atmel Studio. And we can see here that the advertising packets are being detected or the current draw during the advertising events are being detected. We can even zoom in on this and take a look at the individual advertising channels being sent on under control panel here. We can disable auto scroll and then we can find one that we're interested in. Let's go ahead and look here and then we can zoom in by using the shift and then scroll and we can see here these are the three advertising packets that are sent each one on a different advertising channel. So once we do that let's go ahead and scroll back out. We have it set at one second right now. I'm going to do the auto scroll. And as you can see here, these are the advertising events. And if you look at the window average, it's around 15.9 or let's say 16 microamps. If we compare that to the table that we have and we have it set at one second, it's around 15 microamps. And in this case, we have around 16 microamps. Let's go ahead and run the advertising interval to be at five seconds instead. I'm going 
going to reset and then run in RAM and then go back to Atmel Studio. And let's go ahead and restart this so we don't have any measurements from before. We'll go ahead and stop and then start again. So every five seconds, we'll see an advertising event. Let's go ahead and zoom out so we have more than a few advertising events happening within the same window to get a more accurate average measurement. It's going to take a little bit of time because we're trying to get more advertising events within this window. Okay, so we can see here it's around 3.8. 3.3 anything between 3.3 and 3.9 microamps if we go back to that table we can see for five seconds it is within that range so three and a half microamps and the final test we wanted to do is go up to 10 seconds advertising interval so let's go ahead and configure this to 10 seconds reset the board run in ram and then we can go back to atmel or microchip studio i'm going to restart the measurement there's that first advertising event let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit to get more measurements or get more advertising events within the window to get a more accurate measurement so as you can see here it's around 2000 nano amps which is around two micro amps and if we go back to that table again and take a look for 10 seconds it's around the same number that that we got. So that's it really for measuring current. It's as simple as finding the right tool, connecting, making sure you have the right connections, and then using that tool to measure the average current. And then from there on, you can calculate the average battery life for your device. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.